This is the all-new generation of the Seat Leon. And here on Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with Thomas, we're going to take a detailed look exterior, interior, and the driving experience. And we'll also draw some comparisons to the new VW Golf and the Audi A3 because we've driven these ones already so far. So please join us now in full HD, full screen, and full length. Let's go. In the front, we can still see a very sharp design here from the Seat Leon that hasn't changed in this generation. Actually, the front hood, it looks a little bit, let's say, slimmer, all centralized to the you know, central logo there. This is the FR trim, so it's a sportier trim. We have a more accentuated bumper, for example, in the lower part. And again, these accentuations are a little bit stronger here in the new hood. Then you see here the headlamps, they come standard now with LED from base, a very aggressive daytime running light signature and you can see here the turning indicators will actually replace the daytime running light while they are being activated that's always been a cool feature 4 meters 37 or 172 inches is the length that means nine centimeters or about three and a half inches longer than before this one is the five door hatch there will again also be the estate the sports tourer or st which is a little bit longer right here but with the same wheelbase talking about wheelbase the new VW Golf 8 and the Audi A3 received a shorter wheelbase from the same platform, whereas the Škoda Octavia and the Seat Leon also have the same longer wheelbase. Very interesting because that's really new to the Leon. Let's see how it plays out in driving and also from the rear legroom. Suspension-wise, by the way, is either steel suspension or the optional DCC, dynamic chassis control. This here automatic closing function, it does that after a while. What's very interesting is this, we have this you know, mirror caps here in matte gray. Let me open the car. Well, I can either open it with the key, but also with keyless entry right here, putting hand on the inside, and the mirrors flip out again. Wheels, standard Leon, start with 16 inch, then 17 inch with the FR trim, which we also have today. And optional, also these we see, 18 inch. What do you think about design of new generation? Not too drastic changes here in the side profile. The main design line is right here above the door handles. It's fading out to the rear and then being picked up at the rear once again. And looking here at the rear, which is the most drastic design change with this light strip that goes all the way over the vehicle. This indeed belongs to the, um, you know, to the standing LED light. I activated that now here. The braking light does look different. Zoom out of that. Very beautiful in this integration. The Leon logo, however, looks more, let's say, old school, playful, a little bit reminding us of maybe past marketing campaigns where they stressed the Spanish heritage, for example. Doesn't fit to the rest of the vehicle, but could also just be a contrast. FR trim, again, with some sporty design features. And one of the sporty design features of the FR trim is also Auto Gefühl fake exhaust police is claiming these fake exhaust tips, they are really pure fake and really sure if they are necessary. Not, not taking out my pistol from the fake exhaust police. It's again the key to show you here how the turning indicators are in a cascading way. And you get that when you get the matrix LED lights. And showing you here something more about the lights. For example, when I hit the brakes, how it looks like then. The Leon also comes without gas struts, and then there's a one liter three cylinder turbo petrol engine with 90 or 110 horsepower. Then there's a 1.5 liter four cylinder turbo petrol with 130 or 150 horsepower. 150 horsepower you see here today. And then there's a two liter four cylinder with 90 horsepower. They are the ETSI when they're combined with the DSG, a dual clutch transmission, and then they serve as a mild hybrid so the one also you see here today. So this is the 1.5 liter turbo petrol engine, four cylinder ETSI, mild hybrid with 150 horsepower and DSG 
and front wheel drive. Then there will also be diesel, 2 liter TDI, 115 or 150 horsepower, the latter on also with all wheel drive, optional. Then the PHEV, 1.4 liter, 4 cylinder, 204 horsepower, system output, and there will also be a CNG engine, the TGI. First of all, door closing sound. Yeah, that sounded solid. Then the inside, here the doors, they look quite clean from design and this is also soft touchy by the way. This as well, the red soft cover, so very good in the build quality here. Then this FR inside has a sporty trim with a steering wheel with flat bottom. If you want a steering wheel without animal skin cover, you have to go with the very base version and it's possible only. Inside contrast stitches. This top part here has a nice structure by the way and is also somewhat soft touch. And these air vents they remind us also of the all new Audi A3. Then sporty seats in this trim here. Beautiful job, visual and also from the seat form. You see here is a kind of quilted structure on the inside and different material fabric on the inside. So they really keep you cool at summer and warm in winter and some leatherette accentuations on the outside. So good job with the seats. And we'll soon see more also of the instruments because you can see everything digital now. Oh gosh, you have no idea what noise is this car is making when you have the doors open and the ignition is on. Well, now you know. <laughs> yeah, about that. Hi, that's, that's the seating position. So when I put it all the way down right here and there's no panoramic roof option on this vehicle, here with 1 meters 86 or 6 with 1, there's plenty of headroom left, no problem. I usually put the seat a little bit higher to have more upright seating position, but it's good and very comfortable, so pretty happy with these seats. In the VW Golf, there are these new comfort seats available, ergo active seats. They are, to me, even a little bit better, but these sporty seats here already offer you a very decent comfort and are also soft enough and so on from the surface and so on. So i um, actually pretty happy with these. Manual control like this and pumping up, pumping up your. <laughs> so, and also many control for the steering wheel like this, very wide way and has a very good size also and a very good grip. So overall, very nice and also very clean for this whole setup here. So the visual part already quite decent. And now the interior overview. First of all, here the soft touch with a very interesting structure. Then we have to here matte or brushed aluminum. Pretty cool insert here. Everything is very cleaned up from the whole visual part. Left side, always digital instruments in 10.25 inch. Right side, either a smaller eight inch screen or this one here, the 10 inch screen. Well, and soon more details to that. You see here, there are hardly any physical knobs left, especially not in the central area. Left side of the steering wheel, volume control and also controls for the adaptive cruise control, but they are not that well placed, I think, especially the plus button for increasing speed. Soon more while driving. Then the right side to control digital instruments, switch between different features or also voice input, steering wheel heating is an option. And here in the middle console, again, more air vents, lower part two USB-C devices and also inductive charging pad is available. Apple CarPlay or Android Auto functionally goes for both screen sizes and CarPlay also wireless, but I prefer just with the cable connection, more stable, I think. Then here the start-stop engine button has a heartbeat uh, visualization, so to say. Then the new DSG shifting lever, if you don't have the manual version of the of the often engine. And advantage is it's cleaner, it leaves more space and it's also shift by wire, so there is no real physical connection here, especially when you go D and R and back again, these transitions then, front and back again, they are way faster then. And cup holders not adaptive, but two different sizes. And when you put up this armrest, very well attached, and then there's a little bit more space in the 12 volt power supply. And here we go with the central screen. So everything is done very touch. Also here, the climate unit, you slide or press like this or use the voice command, for example, saying like set temperature to 22 degrees or something, that's also possible. Or you can also say, 
I'm cold. No problem. So it will get warmer at the front also. left shortly. You can also use the voice input for the GPS system. It's a step forward, definitely, but not to be compared with the one that is offered by Mercedes and BMW, for example. This is, so to say, the main menu here. You can browse this like this. And um, here, by the way, also for volume control, but I would also do that rather at the steering wheel to have a physical button, but no physical AC vents. Then you can click here for seat heating, but doing that while driving is, I don't know, um, here for auto AC, that is how it's meant to be actually. You can also change temperature like this, sync again, or here to the separate climate menu, then where the vents are coming from. But again, while driving, super complicated. They want you rather to use the auto AC. Then you can have different hotkeys here, for example, to the media, radio, this one, and this here, the GPS. And you can see here, quite responsive actually that's good but the whole visualization i think to me looks a little bit old school doesn't it here the apple carplay integration yeah that's an old classic definitely and what about the sound system that's quite bass heavy isn't it well the song is but the sound system is as well but the sound is actually quite clear hmm nice so again yeah I want to show you the integration. That's how it looks. It almost uses all of the space and you can still see the temperature as it is, you know. So overall, all functionalities you might want to have, but I think controlling it is a little bit complicated. And yeah, no physical things. That's also what I criticize. And yeah, I want to hear your opinion about this one. And there's the rear view camera like this. You have the PTC on the left and the right side then with a new good resolution and the helping lines also adapt to how the steering wheel is turned. And the digital instruments look like this. You can also change the view actually. You want to have the map inside there or more a purist approach, for example, or the old school style. So that's actually pretty decent. And you can, for example, also have the map in the old school style inside. So that's where you then switch the middle view and then change it here. So a lot of possibilities. And again, often asked, check engine light. It's all fine. When you start the engine, then it disappears. Would only be a problem if it stays then. And now to the rear, which is one of the most significant changes. First of all, the door from the inside here is all hard pack in the rear. Then legroom, and this is really cool so far, only in the Škoda Octavia, now also here. So very good result. This is when I would be driving. So now you have plenty of legroom here in the rear. That's of course a big advantage and headroom also with 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1 works just fine. And a very comfortable seating position here in the rear. The car looks quite sporty hatch style from the outside, but it delivers you a great comfort for four tall adults. Here in the middle part, I mean, you could theoretically sit on this leatherette part here, but I mean, yeah, it would work. It's not too bad, actually, you sit a little bit higher. Also the nice fabric on the rear seats, isofix on the outside each. You do already flip the seat from here, like this one third, two thirds split, or the alternative would be a ski hatch, or then here, the cup holders non-adaptive. And you also get a separate climate unit in the rear with two USB-C devices, optional this rear climate unit, of course. So you flip the logo to open the trunk right there, 380 liters, the same as before. Then a very high loading sill right here. I already flipped one of the seats, but the length here to the normal seat would be about, yeah, almost 80 centimeters in the middle. Here below, you can lift it up for a replacement tire. Then the height actually to the lower cover here is about 53 centimeters. I guess there should also be another device available where you can cover this, you know, this lower ground. You have to see it about from some other cars later on. Here the width is about a meter and the length then to the front seats here about 1 meters 50 that will be of course longer than in the estate version last but not least how does it look like when i also flip the other seats like this welcome to thomas's driving lounge with the all-new seat leon 
Here we're driving today the 1.5 TSI. In this case, the E-TSI means it's the mild hybrid in combination with the DSG, the dual clutch transmission. Also, dual clutch transmission, as we showed you earlier, has been completely redesigned, very small and subtle now, and well, shifting in general is also very subtle because you hardly realize anything. It's so smooth, everything of the transmissions, uh, transitions, everything just goes, you know, you, you hardly any notice any gear shifting. That's of course pretty cool. As for the fuel economy here with this mild hybrid, in, indeed brings you some advantages. We already tested this one here also in the VW Golf and had like equal results and you can if you like you know really want to score the very best fuel economy get some five liters or more kilometers that would be around 50 mpg but that's not really realistic when you drive let's say normally when you floor it out on the motorway it's about eight liters or more kilometers that's more in the 30 mpg regions so the realistic figure then for normal day usage is in between about six and a half liters that's still quite good and you know that's 30 mpg plus definitely so like mid 30 to 40 mpg figures and that's actually quite good autonomous emergency brake also here notifying me of course i had the situation in control but you know it was already telling me yeah you know when i'm not doing anything now so you should hit the brakes here it would be also a situation for example that would not move over to the left fast enough that um, this one also gives me a signal. This AEV, or called a front assist, has been revised for this generation. So it is, let's you know, say, you know, realizes more, has a higher significance also for the whole vehicle. ACC, the adaptive cruise control, has also been revised. And when you have the highest build spec of that, you also have a capacitive steering wheel, which we have here means I don't need to move the steering wheel, the car knows I'm actually controlling it. It is realizing that I'm holding onto the steering wheel. That's of course very good that you don't get false positives for the warning system that you have taken your hands off the steering wheel. So far it's been a quite relaxing ride. You have a typical compact size feeling. This longer, a little bit longer length and especially the longer wheelbase I think you do realize it and you know recently I've driven the all new Audi A3, I've been driving the new VW Golf as well. These two have the shorter wheelbase and I also remember how the Seat Leon drove so far and it doesn't feel like completely different but I think just on the subtle note you do realize this one here has a little bit longer wheelbase, it has a little bit more calmness to the right. Mm question is is it less agile yeah we'll test some more corners i wouldn't necessarily say it's way less agile or something you know the suspension is really good we have the dcc here so the adaptive suspension um yeah they, you know we can pick something from the system we have to go to the drive profile and here then we can also go to the sports mode and in the sports mode the gears are also turned up higher Steering characteristics has changed a little bit. Suspension is also a little bit stiffer if you have the adaptive suspension. Let's see what about the power from 50 kilometers to 80. Let's go. Plop, there we go. That was already almost 90. And here, when you're in the sports mode, the gear is also just kept in a lower gear, longer time. And then you also hear that from the engine. Usually you would drive with the comfort mode here and then the suspension is sit on a more comfortable node. That's of course better. The DCC, dynamic chassis control, this adaptive suspension is a very worthwhile upgrade. So you should definitely get it unless you want, a, you know, just the base spec lay on intentionally. It really adds a lot more comfort to the base suspension that counts also for all the vehicles in the Volkswagen Corporation. Now we are heading out to the motorway and testing some of these new assistance systems or how they have been upgraded. The cruise control is here on the left side now with the, the buttons. However, we also have a lane keep um, 
assist here at the moment tell me please drive in the center of the lane so this system here is obviously not too happy with this construct construction site it's always a good thing to test that some of the vehicles I've been driving here have actually realized it and did that very well um, but here obviously the system is not too happy with it let's see how it changes when I'm getting between the two white lines noise insulation is actually the good level was before as well um, and you know it gives me overall a very solid impression I have driven the A3 and the Golf also with the same suspension basically the same hardware the cars are not too different I feel they tuned this car here a little bit sportier we also have 18 inch wheels mounted so if you want more comfort from the wheels go with smaller ones I think 18 should be the maximum size also you could drink big so what we're going to do here now is we take a look at the blind spot monitor this strangely tuned Mercedes is overtaking us and then interesting is that it appears now here at the inside of the doors why not now we're setting the cruise control once again interesting and when I'm increasing it here with my thumb I'm about to hit like you know with a thumbnail in the, um, the part of the scene really very oddly placed this button so now about the lane keeping assist now it is on and I'm still supposed to have my hands on the steering wheel but you see the car is keeping the lane as again the blind spot monitor with the yellow warning now it's telling in please drive in the center of the lane and if I want to hold this and check it lane assist side assist everything is activated at the moment but I could also deactivate it here if I actually want to. In this case, I don't want to deactivate it, I just want to keep it. Now I'm getting off the motorway here, and also at higher speeds, at about one kilometer, 60 miles an hour, still reasonably silent here in this vehicle. So good noise insulation and gives me a good calm feeling. Not too happy actually with the lane keep assist. Also, the steering wheel doesn't feel that natural while doing that. Mm, yeah, I think experience now lately also in the Volkswagen Touareg that they seem don't you know they don't seem to get the lane centering and that the steering wheel feels like a natural they don't seem I mean they get it right so to say but not in the perfect sense I feel for example that BMW is doing a better job there that they have more you know um, you know accurate steering aid and that they also give you the feeling that it's not unnatural when it's set in you know but definitely just some nuances when driving a lot of different vehicles you know again all silent what you can also do by the way when in, in the comfort mode and you say like i want to start you know a little bit quicker now you can also put the dsc shifting lever to the back then you stay with the suspension in the comfortable mode and you have the dcc set on soft tone but the shifting is set as sports you know that you might want to do that when you plan to overtake, for example, or also when you're rolling down the hill for a longer time or so. Now, it's a little bit harder. Good feeling again here, let some left and right. Suspension is doing everything very well to keep the car pretty much upright. So we don't have too much leaning of the car to either side. There we go. Yeah. It's giving me a very good stable feeling, but I'm really not happy about this lane keep assist. So this would be one of the cars where I would say, yeah, let's deactivate it. And the thing is, you always have to deactivate it over and over again when you restart the vehicle. It's the law. Yeah, manufacturers can't do anything about that. So another lane change here at 100 kilometers an hour. Very stable and fun. and. Yeah, I really feel, I mean, it, it could be just a subtle feeling, but it seems that the Seat Leon here is set on this little, little sport, I know, than the corporation internal competitors. What wouldn't be bad? I mean, it would keep up to its, to its visual part as well, and also to the general little bit younger target group of the Seat brand. Getting in here again. That's what monitor is, of course, also on the other side. So good rolling characteristic. I feel that due to the longer wheelbase, 
the Seat Leon has especially gained here on motorway driving. So that's a little bit more relaxed, I feel. Yeah, I know people who know this party of all driving part here in the you know, roundabouts in Germany. I always put the turning indicator already a little bit too early because they remember this part when there was no construction site. But these construction sites are a good way to test again. Now hit on the brakes. Yeah, quite, quite good feeling in there. Now the S mode here shifting down earlier as well. Next traffic light. So once again the Seat Leon gives us a very good neutral, very balanced handling feeling. And the same thing is also true for the Audi A3 and the VW Golf. So they are in a way setting a benchmark in the compact segment. Um, so many think they do very well. Again, assistance systems wise, you know, lights and monitor is really very well cal uh, calibrated. Most of the other stuff as well. Yeah, like EBSS could be maybe a little bit better but other than that. Um, you know, th this is really among setting the tone. And you know, there are also very good compact vehicles by the official premium manufacturers. But the thing is that the, that the price jumped there, you know. For example, also now look, I will compare the Audi A3 to this one here. I mean, what is the Audi A3 doing better? In a premium sense? I don't know. Just like personal uh, taste, the Audi still has the manual climate knobs. I would really like to have these, you know, but when you close your eyes and you don't control the stuff here in the middle console, um, Driving-wise, I mean, they all somewhat come very close, the Audi E3, the Golf, the Leon, and I can probably also assume the Octavia, because the Octavia is the same wheelbase in this one, it's I mean, almost the same vehicle, so you can also relate to that. But of course it makes sense when they use so many um, same parts. And what is very interesting is, I've been driving, you know, like normal and also rather calmly, but we also had that one, you know, little stronger acceleration, but we had once again at about 5.5 liters or more kilometers as fuel, fuel economy. And that's again very decent. So this new mild hybrid for the 1.5 TSI is working very well. Asking about the stuttering effect, by the way, of the DSG, so far I didn't experience any problems. Um, you know, here when you are just rolling, getting slower. We can test it again at the next stop, maybe next traffic light, if something is happening there, but um, seems to be removed here with, you know, newer software updates and so on. This mild hybrid also enables a sailing, so when you're, for example, just lifting the, the, you know, your foot off the throttle, that the car can just roll without the engine being running. And this can again help to reduce some you know, fuel consumption. So heading out to the countryside now, just a little bit. And I think again, you know, when the wheelbase here has increased, relaxes me a little bit more. There's the old Leon. <laughs> it's funny, you know, how you can say like, I mean, it's still like a modern car. I would say like old Leon, old, you know, in which way old. I think it still responds to the steering very well, so the steering feeling is very good. It's also really precise, you don't have any dead zone area here. So there's a very good setup they found for that as well. Very silent also from the engine when I'm just at some little accelerations. And it still invites me, you know, in the slalom. So, I think I do realize the longer wheelbase if you compare it also so to the predecessor, but would I really say it's way less sporty due to that? Hmm. I don't know. I don't, I don't think it's like a very significant thing. Rather the advantage of having more legroom here in the rear, this is I think the more significant thing. So something that the car has really gained and really surprised me a little bit that they went for the strategy saying like the Golf and the A3 have the short wheelbase and the Octavia and the Leon have the long wheelbase. Um, I mean, we have some differentiation for that then. Yes, definitely. So, yeah, why not? But I want to say like the more remote brands go with the longer wheelbase somehow and the 
more core brands in the corporation go than with a shorter wheelbase. I mean, maybe that's that's the strategy. Skoda has always been with a longer wheelbase um, or a longer length in the vehicles, but Seat actually hasn't. So that's actually the price is that the Leon has the longer wheelbase now. But I think it's rather pure a positive, definitely. So very good driving feeling now also in the countryside and it's still a vehicle where you have, let's say, a normal compact car, but you start driving and you can immediately have fun with it. You can also drive it pretty efficient, but you can also drive it a little bit faster and still enjoy the fun in the driving. It's just, you know, that controlling stuff while driving, hmm, yeah, talked about it in the interior part as well. With this new interface, not too happy with that. Some things are just too complicated. It looks so clean, you know. That's pretty cool. But then again, when I think about maybe you want to change the driving mode with a button or something. No, not possible. So that would be more like you leave it in normal or comfort and then just use the S shifting mode maybe because you could do that with this. <laughs> use the shifting lever still very easily. And also the temperature. Controlling that while driving is yeah, I'm not that realistic. You can do it like this, but still something, you know, distracting or then using the voice input, of course. See when we're heating, voice input here. Set temperature to 22 degrees. Sure. There we go. So that's a way it would also work. But I still think before I'm saying like you know hitting the button then set temperature to 22 degrees or I'm warm or I'm cold. My brain is saying like I'm warm, blub, 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 whatever, you know, and then I turn it and then it's done. That's again the discussion about technological advancement versus you know what's really necessary and what's really useful. Yeah. I'm still a fan of physical buttons, although I'm really you know in favor of more tech and more, you know, high sophisticated things in the vehicle. Well, what about you? So, once again, a very solid performance here from the Seat Leon. It's not that it feels like a super newly, completely different vehicle, but, you know, a little bit calmer than before, maybe due to the longer wheelbase. Indeed, the mild hybrid system does give us a better fuel economy. A little bit surprised by that was already with the Golf and the A3, but that is working very, very well. And I'm really getting close now again to five liters or one kilometers. That would, would be the you know, about 50 mpg. That's excellent, really excellent. So that's definitely significant. However, still to this very good and very well developed platform, the optional adaptive suspension DCC still gives you a very fun driving feeling. So that on demand, this sporty design on the exterior can still live up to what it's promising. And now to our conclusion for today with the all new Seat Leon. So it has, so to say, remained true to its origin. It's not super much different from the exterior. It has grown a little bit in size, especially in length and wheelbase. Therefore, you also have a more calm feeling, especially on the motorway. At the same time, due to the platform and the adaptive suspension, you can still move it in a very agile way. And to me, it also felt a little bit sportier in the A3 and the Volkswagen Golf, although this one here has a longer wheelbase. So, how can I rephrase that? It felt sportier suspension-wise, but not wheelbase-wise. So, wheelbase-wise, it felt a little bit, you know, more, let's say, calm on the motorway especially as i said earlier but at the same time suspension wise a little bit sportier than the a3 and the and the vw golf so i think due to the setting here it evens out the longer wheelbase a little bit let's take it that way interior is also with a good build quality there are some things where you say yeah that's maybe just a little bit simpler and that's also the main difference with the a3 so the audi a3 is way more sophisticated in the interior and i'm also not that content with the infotainment system because it's not that easy to control, especially not while driving. 
assistance systems are very cool actually besides the lane keep assist i think that would need some tweaking other than that very good in driving also again a very neutral and balanced handling good feeling great steering and also a very decent fuel economy with this 1.5 etsi or this mild hybrid system so very interesting takes or findings from today I hope you really enjoyed this episode. Please also tune in to the new VW Golf 8 episode, the Audi A3, and also to come up the Škoda Octavia, which has the same wheelbase in this one. Thank you so much for tuning in today, and we all see you next time.